Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a inch and a half kitchen drain. Now, the reason the homeowner wants to move the kitchen drain is because he wants to finish the basement and eliminate a drop for where the kitchen drain is now. The ceiling would need to be dropped. Now, this drain is original to the house, so it's copper and brass. I'm going to transition into ABS and then move it over. Now, this video is going to be great for the fact that you can see the basic principles on how fixtures are piped, whether it's a sink, a tub, or, or anything else. You need to have slope, and then you need to have a vent. But what we'll do now is we'll look at our setup, and then we'll do material and tools. Alright, so this is our inch and a half copper kitchen drain that we're going to replace. So this comes back and then it comes down into the stack right here. So this is actually a fairly uh, long run for, for what this is worth. We have a clean out back there and then we have another clean out here and then this is going uh, up. So what I'm gonna do here is we'll keep it high and then we'll go along the heating duct. We'll hop over and then keep it tight. So what the homeowner wants to do is eventually eliminate uh, everything that has dropped down minus uh, this here. So th that's why this has been moved up. All this other stuff has been moved up as well. But what we'll do now is we'll go and check out our cabinet real quick and then we'll do material and tools. All right, so this is our inch and a half drain. Our T comes over for our trap arm into our trap, and then our continuous vent jumps into the wall and then continues to go up. So the plan here will be to cut this here, replace all of this in ABS, rerun it, and then put the whole thing back together. All right, this is our materials list. So I have four lengths of inch and a half ABS, I've got 90s, I've got a T, clean out 45s, two inch and a half fern cos, a couple couplings, a union trap, uh, slip adapters in case I have to redo the drain, I don't know yet. I've got two Ys, those will be my clean outs. For down here in the basement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a clean out every 20 feet, so a quarter inch cable will be long enough to reach the next clean out. I've got strap, half inch strap, uh, number eight, three quarter screws, and then ABS glue. Guys, this is what I believe I need for material for this job. So what we'll do now is the tools list. All right, this is our tools list. So I have the cordless kit. I think I just really need the impact. I have a grinder for safety equipment. We have earplugs, glasses, hand tools, measuring tape, level, hacksaw, a ladder, and then in the back there, I have an extension cord. This is what I believe I need for tools for this job. So let's get started. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the old drain out. So I have a grinder. Guys, as always, have safety glasses and pipe protection. All right, now I'll go down the line and cut the rest of it out. All right, so I glued the clean out in and the vertical piece of pipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the fern co onto the vent. All right, so the T is gonna be roughly in line with the uh, trap arm. All right, that looks all right. 
So in this case, I'm purely just eyeing it out. All right, so our cleaner was accessible now, not like it was uh, down below. So what I'm gonna do is we'll figure out where our 45 will be. And then we'll put on our Franco. All right, so I'm gonna glue the piece on here. I'm gonna put the Franco on. And then uh, we'll come back once I reconnect the drain. I need to take off the uh, the trap arm here. All right, so we have uh, accessible clean out now. We have our T Franco. I'm gonna reuse the brass trap. I mean, it's better anyway. And then we have a Franco for a vent. So what we'll do now is we'll head back downstairs and pipe it back to the stack. All right, so there's our drain. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, because we're going from vertical to horizontal, it needs to be 245s. So I'm gonna uh, do my 245s, and then I'm gonna be tight to here. The idea is that I'm going to come over, and then we'll come down on a 45 uh, using a 90, and then we'll stay tight up underneath the here. All right, so I'm gonna put my 245s on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spin. I'm gonna throw another 45. I'm gonna look at the bottom of the hub and then I'm gonna straighten it out and get it tight to the, uh, the joist. Alright, so looking at our increment level, so we're dead flat. Pull that down a tiny bit. Alright, so we got a quarter there. And then looking at our top bubble. That would be level. So you see there's about an eighth of a gap. All right, so we have now, we have grade going down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this piece ready to go. So for our 90, what we need to do is figure out uh, where the 90 is gonna be. So I'll show you this right now the way I do this. Okay, so the 90, I want it pretty darn close to the duct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the top of the hub on the joist, and I'll show you this in a moment. Okay, so this will be the mark for the back of the hub. So that is what I want. I wanna be as close to this as I can, and then the pencil will be the end of the hub. So I'm gonna measure from this now to the other hub there and then cut the piece in. All right, so I glued in a long piece of pipe. This will be the back of the fitting, so it'll look like that. So I'm gonna use this joist tie as a hanger and then I've got a strap there. So this is now strapped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this back and then I'll show you my way of spinning a 45, so it'll be on a, or sorry, spinning a 90, so it'll be on a 45, and then it'll come up uh, underneath these joists here. So this one here, back going this way. All right, so we have our 90 here. So the way I do this is I take the 45, and then I'll spin the 90 with the 45 onto it and give it just a little bit of grade. This has a little bit of grade. Uh, you can see the uh, edge of the hub here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna take a piece of pipe, put it in this end, we'll go underneath this, and then I'll line up the 
the 90 and the 45 and take a measurement. Put in. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to set the grade at 3 eighths. I'm going to strap it down there. And then I'll be able to fly away on this. All right, so we have a strap there, we have a strap there. Uh, my local code is four feet between straps. So we have a strap there, and then this is less than four feet. So we'll really quickly, we'll check our grade. It should be three eighths. Which is just uh, slightly over. So that works. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pipe this down the line uh, right there I'm going to put a clean out a Y in and this is probably about 17 feet they just had to cut the pipe down a little bit but we'll, we'll put our clean out in and then uh, 20 feet we'll put in another clean out down the line here I decided to move the clean out because it was so close to the joist, it'd make it difficult to get a cable in. So I added a couple foot piece and then I moved the clean out to the next joist space right in the middle where there'd be a lot of room to be able to work if necessary. For this run, I decided to go with 3 8 per foot for slope for grade. The reason I went with 3 8 is because I think it's steep enough where you're going to get a nice flow of water. But it's shallow enough where you're not going to leave food particles or grease left in the pipe. And this is a long run and it worked out fairly well. All right, this is our run. So we come out, we have our clean out. We continue down. We have our second clean out about 20 feet away. And then we continue. And then we hop up. And that's where we go up to the kitchen. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to run water through and we're gonna give this a test. All right, let's go ahead and test. I don't have a stopper for this side, so I filled up this side, but we'll pop the drain. The first thing we're gonna do is check here. Check here, check here. Look for any drips. And let's now go downstairs and 
See if there's anything dripping. All right, so we'll check for leaks. Really, the glue joints, I don't really see them leaking. Uh, we're not doing a full pressure test where we fill everything up, but there's nothing there. Everything looks okay. Really, the only thing that I'm concerned about leaking are the fern coats here and the one on the trap arm, but they look to be all right. And guys, one other thing also, make sure you do a couple tests. Don't just do one. Do a, do a couple big loads of water to make sure everything's okay, but everything looks good. So what we'll do now is an overview of this job. All right, so that concludes this job. So this was a relatively straightforward job. Everything was accessible. Uh, the toughest part of this job was cutting the uh, copper drain in the cabinet with a grinder because there's just uh, less space to work with, but everything worked out well. I suggest, as a rule of thumb, try to use a grinder instead of a Sawzall because the grinder will have a lot less vibration and the last thing that you, you wanna do is break something somewhere else that you have to know go and fix but this drain is up to modern code you have a line clean out that's actually accessible everything worked out well i didn't run into any problems so i'm very happy with the result the time on this job the time was about three hours everything went really well there there was no issues i do recommend uh, with ABS, or I guess with just piping in general for drainage, hang your pipe first, set the grade before you uh, glue anything together. Because if you glue it together and you're trying to get it strapped up, you can actually uh, mangle up your uh, glue joint and have a leak later on. And one other thing is make sure that you test thoroughly. Give it a few runs of water to make sure that you have a good solid test. I threw in two clean outs that were 20 feet apart. The reason I did at 20 feet, I think the code is more like 25. My rigid cable is a 25 foot cable, but when you're going down a pipe, you're losing a little bit of linear footage because of all the bends. So if you go at 20 feet and you have a 25 foot cable, then you're gonna reach the next clean out. Uh, with with a 25 foot cable, but the last thing you want to do is be short with your cable I have designed this where it'll be easier for a homeowner to be able to Rot out the drain themselves if and when that time comes and it will come at some point because it's a kitchen drain Food and grease will go down it. So you're eventually gonna have a blockage no matter how much maintenance you do for your drain the cost of this job uh, the, the pipe strap glue screws and anything else. The cost was about $140. Other than that, everything went really well. I'm happy with this. Uh, for you guys that want a, a better understanding of how uh, plumbing or drainage for fixtures, how it's been designed, this video will be a good visual representation of how it's done. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.